Hello, uh, my name is Chan. I'm from Cisco Networking Academy. For more information, you can visit our website at worldwidewebciscomnu.com. Today, we're going to talk about physical layer and mainly about uh, UDP and SDP cables only. So in layer one, let's say you have two circuit, uh, this one, this circuit, and this circuit. You're going to connect them using copper. How many wires do you need? How many wires do you need? One, two, three, four. Minimum, how many wires do you need? One. One, okay. So actually, you need two wires. So you imagine this is a battery. All right, this is a positive, negative. And then uh, there's one wire here going all the way to the receiver circuit. Another one wire return. So you need to complete the circuit first. All right. So make the circuit complete. Then once the circuit complete, then you have a voltage difference from here to here. From here to here, there's a voltage difference. Then when there's a voltage difference, there you can send current. Then you can send signal. All right. So remember. Or two wires is required to send a signal. All right. So in uh, you can have a simplex, half duplex, and full duplex. Simplex means that uh, one direction only. Half duplex means that one direction at one time, and full duplex means both at the same time. All right. So if you use two wire, come in. Uh, is it simplex, half duplex, or full duplex? Half duplex? All right. The best you can do is half duplex. If you can take turn, all right. If you can take turn between the sender circuit and the receiving circuit. Uh, so for full duplex, four wires is required. So you have TX positive, TX negative, connect to RX and so on. Okay. We're going to uh, talk more about this in uh, later on. All right. So the next thing is a uh, unshielded twisted pair. What's the word shield mean? The word shield means what? Protection. Uh, just like in the Star Trek, the Klingon is coming. So you say that shield up, shield up. All right. So if you have a EMI noise here, directly connected, affecting the cable. All right. So. All right. You have an EMI noise here, and this noise will directly affect the cable here because it's not shielded. So the noise from external will directly affect the cable. So you also have overall shielded cable. That means that in this plastic, all right, there's a metal or aluminum foil protecting the cable from the outer layer. Okay, so in this case, if there's an EMI, there's a noise coming in, it will be grounded. It will ground it, okay? So the external noise cannot affect the cable inside. Okay? But then there will be a crosstalk. Crosstalk between cable. Between cable, uh, if the voltage is high enough, there will, or there's a, the cable cut inside, then uh, there will be a crosstalk. All right. There's no protection between crosstalk. All right. Then you have an individual shielded twisted pair. So meaning that not only overall is shielded, inside each of the pair is also shielded. You can see here, each of the pair is also shielded. So it protection from external noise and also there's protection from crosstalk. So whatever signal here will not cross over here because everything is grounded. Okay, so okay, but once you have a shielding, you make the cable more difficult to bend. So installation wise will be slightly harder la, because the cable is harder to bend. Uh, then this shielding uh, you must properly ground it. Properly ground it means that this shield must touch a metal plate on your patch panel. So that is properly ground at earth. If not, if it's open like that. Then it will be act like an antenna, you get even more noise. Okay? 
so this is the difference between the shielding and unshielding all right so uh, when you get the connector the time you will have a pin on your pc you have a eight pin you took correctly on your pc there you have eight pin so for pc you call it a medium dependent interface all right your network card is a medium dependent interface your hub and switch is medium dependent interface exchange all right so the pin one and two will be a transmit so you can see the tx positive connect to the rx positive pin here then the rx negative so this is one circuit all right this is one pair of wire and the second pair is pin three and pin six all right so this one will transmit at this direction this one will transmit at this direction okay so whenever you do any cable you just need to match the tx positive pin to rx positive tx negative to rx negative pin get the pin spec for any serial or when all right especially copper you get that you crimp then most likely it will work okay you just need to spin spec ask for the vendor documentation they were able to give you all right then this is a cross cable suppose uh, uh, this is a network card you want to connect to the network card but the pin spec is the same isn't it so cannot isn't it T transmit cannot connect to transmit isn't it so you need a cross cable one to three two to six so you have to specially make the cable yourself then only you can connect PC to PC but uh, nowadays most of the chipset the advanced chipset from the NIC they are able to do the the switching internal switching themselves okay some even do it automatically okay some you need to configure on the Cisco switch you need to configure all right so uh, because it's quite messy to have cross cable all right most of the cable is straight so cable wise okay all right huh? all right so why you need to twist the cable ah uh, why why what's the why don't you put it straight you know why you want to twist it more job for you correct huh forgot about it already okay never mind uh, so you remember in the physics class in your secondary school when you have a column flowing so you have a electromagnetic field coming in all right right hand thumb rule all right so the uh, emi is generated across the around the cable so if you have one cable the current flowing like this another cable the current flowing like this so the emi field will cancel out each other so you have less noise that's why you put it uh twist it together so that's why you can see from here again you can see these two must be from the same pair so then they can cancel out each other because the current will be flowing like this all right uh, so now you understand uh, so both like that the the emi field is on the opposite direction so it will cancel out each other all right uh, but if you do not follow the pin spec the cable will still work as long as the pin meshes it will still work okay but then you will not get 100 meter up maybe 20 maybe 30 because the noise is so greater because you cannot cancel out each other all right is that clear clear all right why do you use copper copper because uh, first is a good conductor second is corrosion resistant so it's very difficult to corrupt compared to steel then it's ductability do you know what is ductability like a plaster seam you can remember it make it long you know it will, will not break uh, okay just like plaster seam or like a rubber band right? you can make it in any form you like that's why you can pull it then become very thin and long it, it good for fiber good for wires all right because you can pull it very thin and long okay then it's malleable because you can like that like that all right it's quite a soft metal all right like that like that then uh it won't crack 
okay it won't crack then it's good lah because the current will flow if it crack uh, okay uh, then it's also very strong okay tensile steel is very strong okay and you can keep the high temperature around 240 celsius so you can do a lot of good a lot of environment you can do like around 240 celsius okay there's two type of copper twisted pair land and coax for video and t3 and e3 line okay so the thicker the conductor the cable the thicker the cable you can put more current you can carry all right so more current means uh, you can less noise uh. then the cable capacitance also affect the signal carrying capacity capacitance is the function of how close the conductor are to each other then you also have cable uniformity all right cable uniformity what does it mean all right uh, let me show you what is cable uniformity all right so let's say you have a cable like this all right then uh, then it's okay but let's say sometime when you pull the cable it become like this uh, all right so some of the signal will bounce back because this is a tighter region okay sometimes you have a cable like this okay it's so thin you cannot see uh, so cable u uniformity is is important all right oh how do i do it uh? uh okay all right uh then you also have a chemical component the insulator all right so you have a cable and you wrap it with an insulator isn't it so two cable together isn't it so normally uh, the voltage in the cable carry between so the voltage you have to be very low less than 50 watts because the plastic used to cover the copper is very thin all right uh, you this is for communication not power cable huh? power cable you can see how thick is a power cable uh, <laughs> the wire the sometimes the plastic is thicker than the wire all right? okay that is power cable communication cable uh, is different the plastic the insulation is very thin okay then the next thing is uh, uh, when you have the cable you have this is the copper and this is the insulator correct so in this case this is a solid cable inside there there is only one wire one wire solid cable so if it's a solid cable the contact will be very good you put in the contact very good contact but then the cable is less flexible and easier to break because there's only one cable all right whereas the shredded cable you inside you can see a lot of small cable made out one cable all right so this is less conductor because less contact because when you make a contact all right it's a few cable there the contact is not that good all right okay but then uh, it's more flexible let's say patch cord because you can bend it because it's made out of few few uh, maybe 10 20 wires small wires then uh, is the contact will not be that good but then if the cable is flexible and not so easy to break okay uh, then this uh, cable insulator you have a uh, thermal plastic all right this is widely used uh, resistant against sunlight ozone oil and solvent and pvc allow bright color and easy to strip what do you mean by easy to strip Sometimes you need to remove the plastic from the cable so you strip it all right so you want to remove the plastic so you have to be very easy to remove the plastic let the copper then only you can make the contact with the circuit or with the connector or so on okay uh, this one you need lab, labs uh. Uh, then you have a uh, fora polymer uh, this one used for high temperature application and then you have el elastomer 
all right this one is a rubber light so you return the to the shape after the cut tension is released uh, this one may be on the underground all right underground environment okay uh, or harsh environment you you need this because sometimes you pull the cables all right okay so then there's a wire grade so the grade will be uh, uh, determined by American wire gauge all right so the smaller the number the bigger the diameter all right so you can look it up uh, 19AWG 24AWG all right the smaller the number the thicker the wire then these are the cable category all right uh, you have category 1 is used for old telephone wire category 2 is for IBM token ring category 3 is for Ethernet uh, 10 megabits category 4 is for 16 megahertz token ring <coughs> category 5 is for fast Ethernet 5e also for fast Ethernet and category 6 is for uh, gigabit Ethernet uh, is is more expensive okay for future category uh, basically you face with maybe a 20 years investment in wiring that may not be compliant with the industry all right so when you wire the time you have to put the best wire because the wiring will cost you a lot all right really cost you a lot maybe you cannot let me ask you if you, you ask a contractor come here to hack the wall here, lay pen cable, put back cement, put back the polishing and put back the tiles, uh, how much is going to cost you? How much? Uh, well, you get the feel out of it, isn't it. Or let's say you want to pull one cable across three lap, right up this riser. You have to climb out, then pull, 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 pull. One wire only la. How much? Uh, two, without two three hundred ringgit they won't do for you. Alright, just to pull the wire. <laughs> you know, they come one time they already want to charge you one hundred ringgit already. Uh, depend on your location. Correct? Uh, so when you do you have to do one time, clean, do it for a very long time. Install the best. Because you don't know how long the best will last. Alright? Maybe you install the best now, alright? Then later on another category come in. Oh, then, then what are you going to do? All the wires is already in in your cable in your in your office. Are you going to take it out, put another one? Uh, alright, it's very expensive. Alright. Uh, so this uh, is about all about cable. I focus mainly on. Uh, copper cable because most of the thing done is in copper cable all right uh, for fiber optics uh, is uh, quite lengthy you want to talk and there will be another talk on the fiber optics all right so most of the cabling job is done by a blue collar staff meaning contractor and so on lah. so most likely you will not deal with it what you deal with will be on the higher level like you sell cable the cable spec testing commissioning and so on okay uh, if you deal with cable definitely uh, the vendor will give you more training all right any question no uh, we stop here for a while if you have any question you can email me the slide will be available in the youtube link all right i'll put also the slide in the YouTube link. Thank you.